Pastel Pastel Bonito is here with us. And um, yeah, I think the first time we met was at an art show. Oh yeah, it was that Park and Rec, right? I think so. It was like art, like oh parks, God. like arts and parks or something. Art and Rec. Oh, was it? Which is okay. like a play on their bar name? Yeah, that's what I just tried to do right now, Sorry, but it Andy. didn't work. Um, but um, no, I think, yeah, I think that's where we met. And I, I just, I went there with the friend I remember. And I, you know, a lot of times I go to these events, I'm basically hanging out with, um, I don't like, I don't go to a place to hang out with somebody. I go to like mingle, like unless oh. we're going on a date or like a specifically me and to, you, to be with them. Yeah. Yeah. To be with them. Then I'm not, um. I'm not, I'll go, I'll start like walking around and stuff. And mm-hmm. so that's, I think how I ran into you Yeah, and a few of other people that we know. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know. I think that's just, it was just cool. Like meeting, like I don't have that many gay friends. <laughs> and it, I think it's just because I'm probably not around a lot of gay areas or like, I don't tend to do, like <laughs> things that maybe, um, you know, foster maybe a little bit more of a dynamic group of people as far as sexuality, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's nice that I have somebody like you <laughs> where I could talk to. And um, but, yeah, tell me about yourself. I mean, I think I met you. You already kind of established yourself as like, you know, this persona that you've developed yourself. And um, like, where did that all start with you? Did you? hold this through high school and then you kind of developed it you know oh no (laughs) this has been cooking for some time um (laughs) i think the farthest back i can trace like the origin of uh, who i am i guess right (laughs) would be fifth grade when i was like 12 or something but i went on to those like online games it'd be 13 or older and i was like oh my god you know oh Okay. It, it was Gaia Online. <laughs> if you've Gaia? ever played that, it's not. What, what? What? How close is it to like Maple Story? It was pretty close, but it wasn't about fighting. It was just talking to strangers online, <laughs> like. And then you could like cute dress characters. You could dress yeah. yourself up. And um, <clears throat> I don't know. I well, I started my artwork by drawing other people's characters on that website. Oh, and, like, cool! They would pay me like through the, like the fake money on there oh nice so i mean to this day my character still looks done like i am rich <laughs> i'm like i go on yeah, probably yeah. once every few months when i'm like probably like drunk or something and uh-huh. i'm like oh my god i'm gonna put together this really cute outfit for my character who i haven't logged on seriously in like probably like four years uh-huh <laughs> oh man so that's <laughs> and that's like the origin and that's how So you basically took like an on like, you know, that's almost like creating a sim and then, you know, wanting to be that sim. And then you kind of like create that like, you know, you took that persona that you I guess you saw yourself as that. Right. As this avatar, as as this whether it was like the clothing or like the style, maybe the expression that you you were able to release through that platform. You're like, why not apply that to I mean, I draw a lot of character designs, so I mean, I view every one of those as almost like like my Sims. Like these are my oh, these are my right creations. Okay. Like they, um, an artist once told me when you draw somebody, when you draw, when you create a character, mm-hmm. don't think about them in that moment. You have to think about like what they eat, like what's their favorite food. <laughs> nice. If that makes sense. Nice. No, it's I totally like, get it because uh, I'm in, I'm into branding, so like mm-hmm. branding is not just. You know, you don't think of, uh, for example, Starbucks as just the logo. Yeah. That's like the smell much. of the, when you walk in, it's mm-hmm. the lighting, it's the customer service. So, yeah. It's like think about all the things that no one's ever really going to know that right. isn't really important. But it helps you create almost like a fantasy within this one specific, like, character you've created. Character. I mean, yeah. that for me, it's characters for other people, it could be like logos or photography, but I mean, true. It's I'd, just it's building yeah. like that story behind it that kind of makes that more of a complete picture, I guess mm-hmm. overall. And it, I mean, it makes you as an artist a little bit more genuine when you fully think something out and you're not 
very surface level with everything. True, yeah, because it. I feel like that's basically what like first grade art was like. Here's blue and red. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You know, and then, like, later on, you're like, oh, man, this is cool. I felt this emotion through. All right, you know, I'm trying to express this emotion, maybe. And it's not just colors anymore. Tim, you were very existential in first grade, huh? No, no. I never, <laughs> like, thought about it like that. I know. Um, but, yeah, like I feel like that's what it's like. It's basically adding those extra layers of meaning or I don't know what you want to call it, but into that art that kind of makes it um, pop a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I'm going to actually, I need a timer over here. So <laughs> I'm just going to really quickly. <coughs> um. <coughs> but yeah, I get it. I get that. Um, I think the most I got into like character creation was I, I was probably at in middle school or something. And I just like the idea of comic books. And so for, like, a few months, I was just drawing, like, I don't know, what, comic boards or, like, comic windows or, or like, little boxes where everything mm -hmm. goes in. Story I don't know what the fuck they call it, but I was just drawing, like, stick characters, but, like, I was adding story behind it. Um, but I think that was, like, one of the first times I've ever thought about myself being, like, an artist mm -hmm. was it would be really cool to, like, at that moment do this for a living or, like, I could draw any day, you know, like it's not something it didn't seem like work, you know. I mean, I was the same way when I was in third grade. I made a like a little book mm -hmm. and um, I read it to first graders. I don't remember how I did that, but my teacher was like, oh, go read to some first graders. And it was just me. Like it wasn't like a class assignment or anything. So I was like, <laughs> I don't know, that was wait, weird. wait, what grade were you in? I was like third and I read to first graders. No, it fully wasn't. I just made a book, and um, my teacher was like, this is cute. Go read to some first graders, because I guess she was friends with the first grade teacher. Oh, okay. So you and made, what yeah. the fuck? And so for like a... Like a story or like a comic? like a It was like a story, Okay. It was, and it had like illustrations. Like it was like a mini... It was held together by like staples, but like it was like a little book. Okay. And oh, um, for a minute there, I wanted to be a um, children's illustrator, and then I realized I hate kids. <laughs> I yeah, I'm not a, the biggest fan of. And children. when did you start hating kids? <laughs> I would say probably about like high school. And when you say kids, you mean like I mean people like, in elementary school, or like I mean like fresh out the womb to about middle school. Oh like, man, I don't. It's not like I hate every child out there. I'm not okay. a monster, but like, what is it about it? Is it just because you can't talk to them in a, uh, on a like? A more level-headed... Well, A, I curse a lot. Okay. And B, um, I get really impatient with other people, which okay. is an awful trait, but I'm an Aquarius moon. Um, <laughs> is that the one with the fish and, like, the no. coming out of the pot? Actually, I Aquarius, don't know. I thought, was just, like, a like water, but I might be wrong. It, it sounds like water, but it's an air Oh, sign. is it not? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, I don't know why. I just... If I wish I liked kids, but I, I don't. I like my nephew. Right. Okay. That's an, you know what? <laughs> That's hard because uh, I, w I worked for a place where at an after school program mm -hmm. at a middle school. And um, that was the first time I ever worked with kids in general. Like, you know, I was there as like a mentor or a coach. And um, I learned a lot about, uh, like, do I like, I guess to answer that question, do I like kids? I do like kids. I think the reason I like kids is it's almost, you know, when you were six or seven or eight or nine mm -hmm. years old, your reality was contained within those nine years of your life. Yeah. So going back and like m meeting those people is kind of interesting because you almost like see the cap of their thinking, like, like not their, like the, l the height or, They don't know any better. So mm -hmm. like you could you can almost like see like, yeah, your potential, their potential seems like it's right here because that's how they're thinking. But realizing there's much there's a much bigger world out there. It's kind of interesting to see like how that mind works, you know, at that age. So, yeah. I mean, I think 
Okay. I don't know if that any of that no, made okay. sense, but I'm just trying to. Uh, I mean, I think I have a harder time being patient with kids because kids are a product of their environment. True. Things like like racism and homophobia are learned at young ages. True. And I've experienced like children staring at me oh, okay. in like the worst ways, and like. Oh, saying, okay. like, so maybe you don't hate the children you hate. No, that's it. That's exactly what it is. I hate the older generations that right. teach children, right. children, these awful like tendencies. And I mean, I guess racism isn't like a tendency, but it's, right. it's an issue. And um, oh, shit. So it's I think it's more that where it's like you are because children you're, tend you're to a speak sponge. To, yeah. You soak things up and you haven't done anything with all that yet and then uh, they also think they're right a lot of the time yeah and that's so because their parents they assume that their parents are right which right i mean i think <laughs> me as like a 20 year old i think as a parent you should totally like <laughs> you know what I mean? but like oh for sure i like, think you should fully um teach your children that not everybody's right all the time right like, my parents aren't right all the time i'm not right all the time mm -hmm. and um i think it's important in children at least to like let them soak the environment that they choose up mm -hmm. as opposed to the environment you put them in. Right. And, and you know, it's hard. I feel like it's, it's also like, it's almost the parents fault because they should almost know better growing up. Oh, it's fully the parents. Fault. Yeah. That the, <laughs> their parents didn't teach them. So therefore they should take this initiation or initiative. Uh, initiative. Yeah. Sorry. And they sound the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, frat in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take this. Um, should take an initiative to like educate themselves because the world their children are growing up in is way different than the world they grew up in. You know, and it's <laughs> you know f people who have kids at eighteen. I mean don't have the best brains on their head. But even then it that shouldn't be an excuse to like hate, you know, or like I guess it's true, but at the same time I th th the majority of people I've met right who are more open-minded and more like um socially aware mm -hmm. are the people with young parents. Are the people who had whose parents had babies at like 17 and 18. And I think it's because that when I mean we're in our early twenties, like mm -hmm. we're open. I mean, you have like oh. a visibly queer person in your living room or dining room, right? Like I think that openness to other environments and other walks of life is more apparent in your twenties when you're raising somebody else, as opposed to say like your thirties when you're thinking about like or so more seriously. If that makes sense, are you saying that people who are, are younger tend to raise their kids? with like a more open mind and I'm, I'm not speaking on all parents right but, but uh, in, there's in some my kind of in the experience maybe. that i've been okay in, that seems that seems uh, to be true uh, yeah i see what you're saying i think uh so that's true people who have kids like in their older older years probably are more like are uh, have already developed their ways mm -hmm. so it's much harder for them to like even you know instill that into their own kids about being open-minded or yeah. you know you're right I mean, man granted I this is also a topic that i did not even expect to be talking about oh i i just <laughs> felt like it's <laughs> no i know i mean it would be like the elephant in the room like so, uh, yeah so uh, Pastel Pastel Bonito, <laughs> child hater you know like, you know uh <laughs> uh that was funny when i first met you man i'm i'm not you're gullible like, oh he hates kids <laughs> no no <laughs> When I first met you, I, uh, you know, I guess I'm not around, I don't know if it's pe like just uh, like a lot of artists enough to know that they have like, um, I guess uh, whatever you want to call it, a stage name or artist name oh, or mm -hmm. musician's name, like what you call yourself. And so I go around basically believing a lot of people's first, uh, <laughs> like, you know, if I meet someone for the first time for the first five minutes, I believe anything they say. And it's not that like I'm trying to be gullible or that I'm stupid or that I'm ignorant. It's just you don't know. It's just I don't know when, you know, what's the worst thing 
Imagine if you told me, yeah, I'm queer. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. No, you're yeah. not. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. uh, that'd be like a big issue. Although like, if I told you I was straight, you also would have been, <laughs> that yeah. also would have been an issue. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I totally get it. I don't think a lot of artists do have stage names. I think it's, I'm, I mean, I'm a byproduct of, <laughs> I'm a byproduct of my environment, which was right. like, um, growing up wanting to learn about queer things. And I was in high school, I was super inspired and still am inspired by like drag queens. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that, like, aspect of, like, a persona and as, like, a larger-than-life figure is what I was really attracted to. And oh. that, that's why I go by Pastel Bonito. Because okay. that's not only my artist name, but it's my, like, it's my drag name. It's right. my Instagram it name. multiple it's, like, uses like that. I see. It's okay. my brand. Right. And, and I guess when I first met you, I was... When you said passed out, I'm like, oh shit, that's cool. Like people name their <laughs> no, my kid. parents aren't that creative. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm like people name their. Usually, it's usually Olive or maybe. <laughs> that, uh, that's the most common name. No, to you? Olive. no, I'm just saying like not a common name, but like food. Is oh oh okay oh I usually get passed out like the colors. That's, that's what like, I thought, but it's not cake. No, I mean, I it thought is, it was cake. It is. It somebody is, told it is. me that. That's oh, not that's... how it's spelled, though. Oh, is it not? I don't know. P A S T E double L E. Okay. Well, no, it's because I think somebody told me no, it pastel me. means cake. It I'm does. Like, oh, shit. In like, Spanish. He is kind of like this, like, sweet, like, you know, frosty. Oh, okay. I thought like... we were going in a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> no. I was like, <laughs> I would like this. I'm, I'm comparing you to, like, the, you know, I'm not, if I'm. If you were the, the a metaphor, if you were cake. a snack, I wouldn't be eating like a, a salted cracker, you know. Yeah. I'd probably be eating like this nice sweet cake with this like, like maybe uh, strawberry like filling or maybe you know it depends on what okay. kind of cake you are. Okay, but, I see that. Um, well, I mean, I guess the full name would be like Pretty Cake. Like that's what I'm saying. That's like, oh, okay, that's his name, Pretty Cake. Right on. I, it wasn't. I, it took me a while to figure that out because <laughs> well, I knew what bonito means, which is like pretty or like mm-hmm. beautiful or handsome i don't know that's a boy that's a boy thing right well or i mean i took bonito as it's more of a guy uh well yeah, i mean yeah when you're calling somebody bonito, bonito it's like that is but that's, ma- that's, that's like masculine, male right? it's a masculine term for saying but like, if like good looking say it was lamp like it's bonito i would refer to as a lamp because it's like an inanimate object so it could also i thought of it more as like Gender neutral, but that was also before I learned about like the X, like Latin X, bonita X, which is um, how most queer people identify, and that's how the more politically correct correct term of Latino or Latina is Latin X. Oh, dude, because I did not know this. Neutral. Like, is that is yeah. that what you write down? Like Latin, like La- how I you... mean, I consider me Latin X. Like that's what I okay. That's the label I put on myself. Right. So that falls. Okay, so the LGBTQ mm-hmm. is so all so you would consider yourself also like gay and also queer, or is it queer? I mean, I consider myself queer because okay. my gender is different from my sexuality. Where my gender is gender queer. Okay, which means I feel like my gender changes day to day. Okay, so I go by all pronouns. Like okay. He, she, they. Okay, so I don't think I knew that. So I knew you were. <laughs> I mean, it's in my Instagram bio. No, I'm is it? Kidding. Not to be that person, but yeah. What, what is? What it says that you're gender queer, and then he, they, she. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I. I think I might have seen it. I just <laughs> didn't like. I was. I think because I. I knew you were or like queer, gay. Mm-hmm. I associate everything else with that also queer and <laughs> no, gay. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't know exactly the No know. but yeah that's the that's my identifier, I guess. Okay. It's like so that's that's you know, I've never I think the most I don't want to say this is confusing because it I, I I guess I get it on a superficial level and mm-hmm. then I'm trying to get it on like a deeper level. Mm-hmm. But um I think the most like not confusing but definitely like not just gay was um i had a friend or a friend of a friend had uh, a partner that was acting as a guy but was a it was a girl that wanted to who wanted to be a who dressed like a guy i guess or like you know and so 
but he was acting as the female in the relationship. If that makes any sense. Okay. So it was a female. Well, well, female. So it was. I think it's trans and trans related. A, a male. A trans, trans male. Trans male. Okay, and then and but that he was playing the female part in the relationship, like he was being the more feminine person, and. But like, yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, your gender doesn't have to identify you by these like by these rules I guess right it's like yeah that's what I'm saying yeah. I, that, was, that was a very like whoa like they're playing different ro- ro- like it's not just one thing you're not just gay or this person isn't just playing the female it's like they have like it's way more dynamic than straight you know mm-hmm. fucking yeah. like so and this is this is an example of kind of I guess I don't know if it's new. I don't think it's new. What I'm trying to say is like definitely it's not. it's definitely more known that it's not just gay anymore. Yeah. Um I mean I did a piece on um Muxe, which is M U X E. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um and they were is, okay. considered uh from my research of them, they were considered to be um pre-colonized Mexico's, like, indigenous Mexico's um, trans women, where they were seen as good luck. They were seen as, like, almost these um, larger than, I guess, like, superficiality because they're so in touch with who they are. Okay. And, like, so it wasn't just a look. To be. It wasn't just a look. Right. It was more what it is nowadays, which is, this is who I am, Mm -hmm. as opposed to, this is what I look like, if that makes sense. But, um... Right, yeah, so that's, that, I, I, okay. So, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that it's not a new topic. It's just, has more exposure now, and it's not, it's not done in private anymore. Right. Because... Yeah, a lot of that stuff as a kid, I think... At some point, I knew about it. Like, I don't think I knew about it until, like, maybe middle school. But definitely, like, elementary school, you had kids that were definitely gay. You know, and in your head, you just couldn't, as a kid, not knowing any better, you kind of just thought, like, maybe something was wrong with them. Or, like, how is, why is he not the same as the rest of the boys? And I was never, like, a bully towards anybody. But if you don't know, like, it's almost if, like if you don't know better, then, you know, how are you supposed to make that decision and, you know, I I don't think I was ever mean to any gay kids or or lesbian girls or um, I probably actually had one friend in like sixth grade who was gay and you know it was funny like um, I remember he was like saying he liked this one girl and I think that was just like at that age probably a, an attempt to kind of like make people think otherwise. His beard, yeah, yeah that that he was like he because he was so obviously flamboyantly like obviously like gay. You could tell like his <laughs> voice and his, f- just the feminine things he would do that I don't think he wanted that attention. And so he, you know, he announced to like some kids like, Oh, I'm going to go ask Liz out, you know? And then it just became like, I don't know what, how that ended, but like <laughs> he, in high school, you could tell he was gay. And then like remember like a year after he, w- he came out like on social media that like, which is cool, but, like, what I'm trying to say is um, definitely, like, 15, 20 years ago, you know, all of this was not as well-known and, Mm -hmm. I guess, common conversations. Yeah. So Um, That's interesting. I think, um, like I said, I I just don't, I don't, I guess, hang around a lot of places that are, like, Queers. Yeah, a lot openly of, queer spaces. Yeah, and there's like some events or art events here locally that mm-hmm. are more open to that. And so Well, I mean, definitely. I mean I'm around San Diego sometimes I also feel whenever I'm booked for a show mm-hmm. where it's like and then we'll have the queer artist. Oh, and then no we'll way. have the woman and then oh, we'll no have way. you know what that's right, that they're trying to almost we'll have the black DJ me. guy, you yeah, know, like the rapper. Definitely. Like. And they think they're edgy because, like, oh, we'll get a woman to DJ. Ooh, you know, (laughs) where it's like. I don't know. It seems like a normal thing if I saw it. I know. It's perfectly normal, but they'll. It depends on perspective. Yeah. It's Um, a look, too. But I definitely sometimes do feel like I'm being 
tokenized okay. in some spaces because right. it will be like straight dudes staring me down, at, like where I'm almost nervous to like walk back walk to like my uber alone if that makes sense you mean in it like in a threatening way or like in a like well, i it, guess that's threatening but like it, in like a non-violent threatening way where it's like they might yell some things at me or they'll oh they'll okay, look yeah. at me funny if i just look at them for too long where it's you know what, that's a whole nother topic i that, i feel yeah. like i could walk into generally any situ like not situation but just any place where there's people around and people won't blink at me Oh, I definitely do not. That's relate. what I was. I, you know, that's definitely do not relate. <sighs> I and can't imagine, man. If I'm, I'm worried about like what I'm trying to eat tomorrow, or like. I mean, I'm worried know. about that too. I'm, but like, <laughs> I know, but like, I'm also worried about like. Yeah, you can't like. Yeah. I, you had this extra layer that you can like, can't hide. I at least I could hide my insecurity or like certain insecurities or problems, but. No, I lay them all on the table. Yeah, these are not the. This is your problem, but I'm saying this is something that. I, I deal with. You deal with, and, and you can't... I mean, I think it's... It, <laughs> I also think of myself as a social experiment sometimes, because I'm like, I look crazy. Like, right. <laughs> like this is me natural yeah, yeah today. Yeah. I was you, like, I should you, really dial it back. Uh, yeah. And you, um, I picked you up. Like, it was a short... <laughs> like, yeah, no, I definitely threw this together in, like, five minutes. But um, I look crazy whenever I go out. So if I'm ever, say, like going to like 7-Eleven to pick up some chips before mm -hmm. I like go out. I definitely do get several right. stares. And yeah. it's, it's almost like, I think of it more as like, why does my existence and me living my absolute best life make you upset? And why should you care? Right. I think uh, you shouldn't. I'm going to, this is kind of not extreme, but you're basically like a character out of like a book or a TV show or out no, of a, out oh, of a magazine. Oh, definitely. Or out of, oh <laughs> out of like, you know, I'm trying to say yeah. that like if you fucking saw Batman walk through, you know, <laughs> you know, 7-Eleven. Yeah, yeah. You, people are going to stare at you. I yeah. feel like that's, there's something there that I mean. I'm so dramatic that I really do think I'm a main character in my own damn movie. Right. And if something dramatic happens to me, I'm like, oh, this is my Oscar scene. And this is where I make my speech, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, I don't know why. It's such a narcissistic thing, but it it makes me it makes my life so much funner. If that makes yeah. Sense. And I you're like Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think about myself. You're like an audience. Like. Yeah, oh for sure. I, I feel <laughs> like you definitely and you can hold an audience too. It's not like you want an audience <laughs> oh, yeah, you but went yeah. To that show. <laughs> yeah, and you don't know what to do. It's like, oh fuck, like you know. I think that's the thing. It's 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 people there's like a very s big um, pool of people where there's a pool of people like I don't want to say normal people, but just like especially people that don't perform tend to like keep into like their own comfort zone almost versus trying to tread. It's like going from like one island going across the Atlantic Ocean to reach that that mm -hmm. person you truly are and not afraid to be and you know, as much as you can express who you are versus that gap in between. I feel like people try to like, I want to be myself or different or, or uh, not as shy to do things, but it's, it's such a hard sometimes uh, yeah. journey to get there, to be able to become that. And I think you definitely have r reached some kind of other side to that. Cause you don't ever seem like, I don't think you'd be wearing this or acting like this or wearing makeup or, you know, the way you express yourself if you didn't already feel comfortable with it. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it was definitely a while that it took for me to get comfortable with all this, but like, I mean, I do think that, um, notion that I said earlier, like of a persona mm -hmm. really helped me out because I thought of myself more as, um, well, less of like, how I should be and more of who I am, if that makes sense. It really gave me the ability to take some time and think of who <coughs> I think I am, if that makes sense. Without the notions of like what my parents want, what society wants, what my, who my friends think I am. And I mean, Oh, that's, I feel like that's so hard to, I don't know if it's a strength either. I'm sure physically too, but ment this mental strength that you have to have to be able to almost, I feel like it's, 
this extra weight that either people are comfortable with or mm. what I'm, mm. I'm trying to say is I feel like it takes a lot of mental strength to kind of let those things go. Or no, like definitely. Uh, or w- work without them maybe, you know, like mm-hmm. knowing that you're all of a sudden not going to care what your mom thinks. It's definitely not overnight. It's definitely not overnight. <laughs> so did you let go of that? Okay. I'm sure it started off like within your house, right? Or no, <laughs> like you became more comfortable around your, your brother or like your parents mm-hmm. about nope. It started at outside, school, actually. Okay. Which was, that was, I mean, granted, I don't live in like Idaho in the middle of nowhere where like I would definitely get beat up. All it right. Was, I mean, I live in a, I went to a relatively progressive high school where like the minority was homophobic people as opposed to gay people, if that makes sense. Okay. Where, like, Sounds like most of America. Yeah. Well, most of like the coasts. We also don't know what it's like to be in the middle states. That's true. Yeah, you're um, right. But, I mean, one day I just, I, I mean, <coughs> I had, like, really bad acne when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. So, like, one day I was like, I'm going to try foundation. And I went to my sister's room and I, I stole some in my hand and I slathered it on my face. And, I mean, I don't know how nobody clocked, like, the white line along my jaw because, <laughs> oh, my God. Because you I don't know how my mom didn't well. clock that either, but... um. Yeah, no. This was at what what age was this? This was probably my sophomore year of high school. So oh, like, so is that the first time you ever wore makeup? That was the first time I, I ever wore public. like like makeup to be pretty. Oh, okay. Okay. And um but that wasn't like that was nothing. It was like foundation. It was just to cover some acne that I was insecure about. Right. But the first time I wore like the first thing I wore was this disgustingly awful orange lipstick that was like shimmery <coughs> and it was such a grandma color and i wore it to school i stole it from my mom i like put it in my backpack right before we left and i put it on thinking oh my god i'm so gorgeous right <laughs> and i looking back it's so not and um uh, i wore it for my first period with show choir okay and um everyone was like <laughs> okay yeah was, i mean i was clearly the gay one right like no one really said anything i mean i was in show choir like there was no shortage of homosexuals but um yeah i feel like uh, that's unfortunate <laughs> i feel like singing like is seen as like a feminine thing sometimes you yeah know? i don't know why but um yeah and i just went through school like that and it was pretty well received i mean no one really said anything to me i got like some questions like oh are you wearing lipstick i'm like yeah i don't know it's the thing I'm trying. And um, probably by the end of that, my junior year, I was putting on a full face every day, which <laughs> who was I trying to impress doing a full face. And I mean, like foundation, contour, eyeshadow, eyeliner, like <laughs> right before my first period. I don't know who I was, <laughs> but. Um, wow. And yeah. and so did you have like friends that you disclose this to? Like, hey, like Maria, I mean, I, I, might, really... I might wear lipstick tomorrow. <gasps> Actually, I think I did. I think there was a few friends who I was like, I'm thinking of trying makeup. And they mm-hmm. were like, go ahead, live your best life. But um And that, did you yeah. and what what did those friends think when you first the first few times you kind of showed up like that? I mean, they were more power to you. I mean Yeah. I mean, it wasn't that crazy. Ma- that made you feel just that make you feel like more comfortable to like at least you knew yeah. some people who you could definitely. I mean <coughs> Yeah. <sighs> but I definitely didn't have like a set of like best friends in high school. I mean I had like really good oh, friends. Okay. But I mean Is that because I didn't have friends who were like my ride or dies. Like right. everyone had their own best friend and I was like okay. Now is that because you were like no, de- it had nothing to do with me being queer. Oh, okay, okay. But it was just about like me moving from like circle to circle a lot. Okay. Um, only because, um, I mean, I, I did a lot. Oh, I was in art club. I was in manga artists united. I was in show choir. I was oh, in man. regular choir. You were like. I was in my senior year. I was in the Personal Finance and Stock Market Association. What the fuck? Right. I didn't know if that was a thing. Right. I was, hey, you know, Mr. my Betts. after school programs were fights. Let's shout out to Mr. Betts. He, I only really went because the the teacher who was the advisor there was great. I he was, yeah, it's the teacher, really nice. not the class. No, right? definitely. I mean, like, I learned some stuff. I learned yeah. how to fill out like a W two, but like, 
<laughs> Which I mean is important for you to learn. Where's your first job? Uh, <laughs> and then you just like just for practice. Uh, yeah, I have. I don't remember what we mostly just like ate snacks and talk shit in there. Nice. Yeah. Those Which are the I mean best is classes. like any high school club. Yeah. Thing. No. Yeah, man, dude. That's I don't know. Like after school activities, I guess. Either you know, I knew people were in them. I just didn't know what. I felt like they had nothing better to do in my eyes. Some of them, like. <laughs> No, I definitely had nothing better to do. Oh, okay. Like, no, you're not wrong. <laughs> no, it's because, like, yeah, my after school activities in high school, like, range from, like, fighting, like, fights after school, or, like, <laughs> skateboarding, or, you know, what? breaking into the school. That, that was, would, like, my, like, we're going to, you know, I had. That's so funny. I'll get home I at would six. walk home and I would pass by a group of people, like, fighting. I'd be like, yeah. damn, do you guys not have, like, a. A release for all this testosterone. No, I like, never like I. I oh, you never fought yourself. I never fought myself. I. Just, I think I just hung around. I don't People say, who fought. Just like, I just these. A lot of these friends were from when I grew up in elementary school. Yeah. But you don't know that Jason's gonna grow up to be a fucking axe murderer, or you don't know that yeah. Kelly's gonna grow up to be a porn star or something. So in high school, she, all of a sudden, you know, Kelly invites you to one of her parties and they're filming. You know, or all of a sudden. You know, uh, what's the other name I gave? Jason. Jason. Jason is zero color. Yeah, all of a sudden, like, you're out one night, and then he tells you there's a body in the back. You know, these you, your friends will develop over time, and I guess I was just, I happened to have friends that became, like, hoodlums and, like, you know, <laughs> so. And, um, but, yeah, so I guess for me, that's kind of what after school was like for me. But, I, you know, I guess I got street smart in a way versus yeah. you got like you started off your maybe the, like a worth work ethic or like definitely getting learning definitely didn't to. definitely didn't start a work ethic. no i felt like that's I, kind I of what have, after school was like no i still have the report card for my junior year where my <coughs> ap literature teacher wrote on there specifically amazing student great personality questionable work ethic what the fuck and i was like all right miss deckard uh, go off like but no, no. but it, that has to do with the work though you would put like i, I mean, would have got a d like oh okay. but i mean i think all those programs um i was mostly doing them because i didn't want to be home okay well i didn't want to be home i is it because there was nothing to do at home or you just I like mean, being around other people i mean i felt safer Around my friends than I did at home. Oh no way! Okay. At that time, right. And um, so that's mostly why, um, I would always be like doing something. Okay, cause to kind of distract away from that family dynamic at yeah. home. I mean, yeah. Um, but definitely, it did help me kind of <clears throat> hone my skills as an artist. I mean, I did a lot of art programs. Yeah, that's what I'm like, saying. I feel like there you kind of that was my time to like discover. What I like to do, mm -hmm. I mean, I like to sing, but it doesn't mean I'm good at it. Like, but I did that for like six years. I started like in middle school, and um, wait, started what? Choir. Oh, okay, singing. Right. Yeah, singing, mm. all that yeah. stuff. But anyway, my, also my show choir was crazy. <laughs> we like competed, and that's I don't know. You Competing competed? in the arts is crazy. Man, I don't think I've so toxic. Yeah, I don't think I've I don't think I've been in a competitive environment where it was like my art versus their art, you know. So yeah. I can't. It's always like always, I've always seen art as like an internal like battle with yourself. So yeah. like in that case, it's like I mean, more it, of a yeah, teamwork. It's like, like a different form of art where it's like less personal when you're in a group. You know. Oh, that's true. Because so you like, have to worry about other people's like. It was more like, <laughs> like having to be uniform. Oh my god! I never thought I'd be talking about show choir. But no, that, this is that, no, that was definitely like the drama and drama of my like high school career, because that was I that took up the majority of my time, and I have no idea why I did that more than actual artwork. Well, I mean, I guess it's not it, actual artwork. Sorry. No, but no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's just you know. You're talking about like physical, like mm -hmm. visual arts, I guess. It's one of those things where like I'm never really gonna use this again. But you kind of did. I mean, that's a performance art. Oh that... yeah, I totally forgot I'm a performer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say is that I feel like, and I think, and anytime like I talk to like a younger person who want to, wants to do something, but don't quite sure know what, I always just tell them we'll start off by doing something you like, 
And choir was probably something you liked to do, right? Yeah. Even though you probably didn't know what you wanted to do in the future, I feel like a lot of those things will apply or you'll at least learn lessons to evolve or shift into the thing you do want to do. For example, I don't know, maybe you like knives, you know? And so you're as a kid, you were obsessed with knives and then you start learning. This is your hoodlum friends? No, <laughs> no, I'm just saying I was going to get into like a much like more oh, okay. like All right, positive topic. <laughs> But I'm saying, like, maybe, uh, you know, you started as a, in woodshop or um, metal works class in high school. You started learning how to make knives. And then you realize you like that as uh, as a trait, you know, to do, but you didn't know what to do. But maybe five years later, you decide to be, like, making furniture or, like, metal, like, uh, pieces of furniture. And all of a sudden, those tools you used in metal works and learning how to bend metal apply to this you know, mm-hmm. so I think what I t- I try to tell people is just start off with something you like because that will probably be some kind of factor or some kind of um attribute that is going to be helpful. Yeah. No, I mean I do. Yeah, like I, d- do. I definitely see that, and I mean <laughs> with I guess being also a performance artist, mm-hmm. being in like choir and like being in these like stages when I was younger definitely did help me. Um, granted that performance is also <laughs> messy because I was in the dark. Th- that last one was that your? L- That's so far has been my only one. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, you went to that, right? Yeah, yeah. That was fun. You know, I can't say too much about the production as far as <laughs> that on <laughs> them. I almost would assume that if they went this far to throw this, like, if, like, you know, and I'm not talking shit. It's just that. It feels like they did such a great job, like seeming to like, um, what do you call it when you host something, but like in an art gallery, curate, curate, yeah, uh, that maybe they were just missing like somebody who knew about lights, you know, <laughs> about like definitely because uh, but there was somebody perform- holding it, in the yeah, back. yeah, and it was you know that DIY, was backlit, yeah, yeah, was I did all, my whole face of makeup only to be backlit, yeah, and, like yeah, um, shadowed in the face. Which but made, was honestly to everyone else's benefit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was cool. And I didn't like the fact that it was your first time doing it made it that much more to the people who knew at least <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> damn, like if this is your first time, like I could imagine what you could develop this into or, you know, even if you don't do anything mm-hmm. with it, just like having that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as like something, an experience or like yeah. a badge you wear, like, yeah, I've performed as this and, you know, it's almost like how many people, how many people could say they they step that far into um, something they really want to do? Or that's true. It's like a I don't know. I'm I sure mean, you I'm, were I'm definitely doing it again. Yeah, but no, I mean I was terrified. I I'm telling you, I when I performed, I blacked out. Like I don't remember anything. Uh, like during the duration of performance, all I remember was accidentally knocking a light down. Right. Well, the only light down. And because I think somebody was like holding it behind, yeah, behind you. me, and that was the curator. And I'm sorry, Irie, but like, <laughs> I fully like threw my heavy denim coat onto her, right? And like, oh, but yeah, and then I, I just remember like half announcing the next performer, super out of breath, right? And like going back to like the I'm, dressing I'm room. I'm surprised you remembered that actually. That's like <laughs> a very like, st- like if you don't know about getting on stage, the one thing I could especially beginning off is you you're basically almost living in the moment and you almost forget what happened five minutes ago and you (laughs) you might forget what you're about to say next because you know this conversation seems fluid and i'm not worrying about what what i have to say next but like when you're performing like especially at you know i think most people when they first perform probably just forget to say anything and just walk off because they're like yeah. Holy fuck, like what just happened? I mean, like, I was also super stressed because I was like, I was like, okay, I have to do this. I had like a checklist <coughs> in my head and um of of like your of what I had to do within right. those few minutes on stage. And I was like That was actually that was I felt like was that five minutes? Like how long was it? It was probably like five minutes. Okay. It seemed like there was a lot of parts to it too. Yeah. So I can imagine because you came on and then you did you, part of your routine and then you took off the coat and then like the fucking Chinese like fan came out, you know? Oh, I totally forgot. I, I'm telling you, I don't remember anything. <laughs> is that, that Chinese? I don't know what that is. It was just like a big fan. It was like a drag queen fan. Oh, okay. like it was, it's made to like pop. 
Like when you. Fr- oh no! One. It was loud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like a fucking. <laughs> I don't know, like a gunshot from far away. You know, like <laughs> yeah. if you heard like but, three um, blocks down. All, all I remember was announcing, going back to the dressing room and just laying on the floor. Yeah. And feeling my muscles just like, like it was weird. I felt like, like I was high off my ass. or something. Yeah. yeah no, you put like, some adrenaline in you. Yeah, and I was just, I was trying to cool down. I mean, I was also sweating my ass off because it was in like. It was like October, but October in San Diego. Oh, uh, yeah. Really it's hot. still warm. Yeah. For so sure. I was just like, and I'm also like <laughs> not a thin person. So like that body heat was really radiating oh, you off me. Feel it, and all my right. friends were like, you did amazing. Try to hug me. And, and I was like, like Fuck off. I am so sweaty. And oh. I'm like, I feel so bad. But no, that was definitely like a moment <laughs> in my life that I mean. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like, um, you know, I've always been interested in comedy and like I guess my interest has peaked over the last few years. Um and so I think the thing about well, I guess I'll cut to the chase, like I performed or like I performed a few open mics over the past few months. It's mm-hmm. not a lot, it was just almost an experiment and to see if I liked it or but what I'm trying to say is that was also the very first time I was in front of a crowd by myself mm-hmm. without an instrument, without a fucking poem, without Oh, anything you know, written? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, stand up. A lot of it's, you know, you have an act, so you do. Mm-hmm. You, it's, it's not necessarily improv, you know. But um, what I'm trying to say is, the f- that, f- that fear and that kind of unsureness when you go up there is kind of almost. I I, I find a, some weird joy out of it. No, like some, definitely. It's almost addicting. Like I want to go up there to see if I could fuck up a little bit less, you know, yeah. or like, yeah. I, I, it's, it's, it's just fun knowing that you don't know exactly what's going to happen. And, um, and it's also like, will they notice if I fuck up? Oh, for well? sure. Because yeah. I mean, when I performed and I watched that video and I was like, damn, I'm fucking up here. I'm fucking up here. I'm fucking yeah. up here. And everyone yeah. was like, you did great. And I'm yeah. Like, no, <laughs> I knocked down a light. Like, that. <laughs> but that was a <laughs> pretty attitude, obvious that fucking attitude, dude. That yeah. Was it was like, so dramatic. You know me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't but give a fuck either. He, I don't think oh you didn't know, right? I didn't A, I yeah. didn't know. And B, I watched it later and I was like, damn, this is so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, even uh, if yeah. That's funny though. Um you know, I think people who whatever kind of art form or, or expression they choose or type of expression they choose to let their feelings out in or outlet. Um I think definitely reaching a point where you can speak to people in the the most genuine, uh, sincere way, I think is part of finding who or what you want to do with your life. Because if you're not genuine to yourself or to other people, I feel like, you know, where is that then going to go into when you do want to do something you want to become? Like, (laughs) I feel like a lot of, I guess artists in general, like most of them, you know, if they know how to talk, if, you know, as far as communicate or socialize in any sense, then they know how t- they're not really. Af- I don't know if they found themselves, but at least on a on a deeper level, I, I would like to think that, you know, you, I, I have no problem speaking to you because I don't have to worry about you. You're just yourself already, uh, not yourself already, but you're. There's no barrier between like being shy there, you know. Oh, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is I found my voice doing that through, you know, I guess hanging around people or performing that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you could like for the most part walk into a group of people and not give a fuck about like you could just say hi and not worry about like I'm trying to be cool or I'm trying to like oh, impress definitely. people, right? Mm-hmm. So um oh my God, maybe sound so confident. Oh definitely. Right. Yeah, you like what I'm trying but, to say we yeah. you, you've you've I think reaching that state of confidence, or if you want to call it confidence, I don't know. I would say self assurance. Yes, if you reach that self assurance where you could, you're so comfortable in that in social situations where you know trying to act cool or trying to display something you're not is out the door. Oh, you yeah. know, I've I've stopped <laughs> trying to be like this masculine like figure for no reason just because I was a guy and I had, Mm -hmm. I had to feel like I had to impress whether it was girls or other guys that like, I'm this, I'm a guy too. I'm this macho. Like, 
you know so like having that like quiet serious persona that that um i'm not saying all guys are like this i'm just saying like this general like what a guy typically would be like a cool serious guy is like you know that serious he has he's talking like this and he's he'll nod at you and i'm not saying there's definitely personalities that are like that that aren't trying mm-hmm. to be fake but for in my head I, I i reached this point of like why am i trying to like <laughs> like fit in this mold right yeah. so I, after a while i found i found my own personality and from there on i was able to make so many more friends because i was being approved or I was being ex- accepted for who I was. And that was one less thing I had to worry about in a yeah. social situation. No, I, yeah, I feel that. So, no. um, yeah, I think performing like that, definitely you've gone through those steps already of like already s- self identifying with yourself and who you are and not giving, you know, a fuck about what people mm-hmm. say or think about you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so do you have, what are your like long term goals or maybe like some of your short term goals that you're looking forward to or well, um, I guess one short term goal would be having like a solo show. Okay. Which I mean it's in the talks. So is this p- p- performing or is this an art? It's art. We'll okay. See. But I might perform. It's it's you probably can, gonna be later. You can do probably a lot of Yeah, I honestly could probably You're gonna probably draw like display your art but also perform and mm-hmm. i'm sure there's another hidden talent that you don't <laughs> we don't know about yeah i'm gonna play the wine glass the <laughs> water glass. <laughs> yeah just <laughs> breaking out like the you know um, like this hour i'm gonna be doing my yeah. wine just glass. the past opening the variety show oh know? fuck yeah that'd I'm be cool backflips yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's a fucking <laughs> talent i don't know anybody that knows how to do a backflip um, actually yeah i do but um I guess a long-term goal would be um, using my platform as an artist Mm -hmm. to um, uplift my community, which is queer people of color. Okay. And um, I think I do that already. I do a lot of portraits of queer people of color. And um, I had a a show once where this guy comes up to me. I had a a piece that was four portraits of my friends. Okay. And they're all queer Latinx people. Right. And they were all wearing makeup, and it was, like, really colorful. I mean, my art is very colorful. It's, <coughs> I wouldn't consider my artwork serious in its aesthetics, but mm-hmm. it's very serious in its um, impact, if that makes sense. Right. You're not drawing fine art that's, like, of this gentleman. Yeah, know, I'm gentleman. Not drawing, like, a naked white woman. Right, right. Like but Renaissance era style. So, on the, t- on the very topical level, it's very fun and, mm-hmm. and expressive in that way. But yeah. there's, you know... I feel like most people, like, I don't want to say normal people, but people that might not be able or don't have the ability to look at things a little bit deeper might mm-hmm. probably skip that, you know? Yeah. Just because oh. it just looks like mm-hmm. bright colors and, like, you know, but for sure, knowing the community. is This this is a situation where it helps to know the artist, mm-hmm. you know? Because knowing you, you would, I feel like a lot of people would get, like, okay, this is you. Mm-hmm supporting this group and and mm-hmm. displaying that in in your way yeah. but uh i mean yeah uh but yeah i was at this art show and i had that up and this guy comes up to me i'm assuming he was another artist there right or i knew he was another artist there and he goes um he's like giving me an, an unwarranted <coughs> critique and i was like okay i prepared for this it's a gallery show it's in like a predominantly like older white male space okay so i was like prepared mm-hmm and um, he if he said something along the lines of like, oh, well, when you do more serious artwork, we can or you can like start expanding a little bit more. And I was like, what? I mean, right. what dictates serious artwork? I mean, he's over here with like a sculpture made of like make pipe cleaners or something. It's like something stupid. And I mean, I'm assuming he has some grandiose meaning to that. But who are you to dictate if my art is serious or not? Because, I mean, while it is colorful and while to the untrained eye, my artwork does seem more like... I feel like that's a very, like, non-artist thing to say. Right? And the fuck? Now that I think about it... I was like, well, I think we're at the same gallery, so you can have a seat. (laughs) Yeah, like, what the... We're like... Well, that's my nephew's name. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have used that for like a white guy. Uh, name, but you know what? <laughs> Wait, what did you say, Charlie? Henry. 
Henry? Henry yeah. Charlie. Like, you know what? I, 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 I uh, said like Winston. Or, yeah. Winston, yeah, I don't think I've met a black. Yeah. Actually, Asian. Winston Churchill came in Christine's way. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, uh, no, I think that's just a general observation. Mm-hmm. Like, if you say Juan, and then, oh, shit, I didn't mean to say that because I was trying to t- say a story about a Mexican. Yeah, it fits. It fits. A Winston or, or a <laughs> Henry's. But, I mean, I do get it. My artwork, I would say how I would describe my artwork aesthetically in a few words would be if, you know those homies figurines? Oh, those, like, like, car- like if the Muppets had a crossover with homies figurines. Holy shit. Is that not just like a perfect descriptor of Yeah, because the work the I feel like the expressions are heavy on the face. Mm-hmm. And but it has that it has like that we like alternative world style as far as like what the Muppets are. Right. Yeah, definitely. Like it has this you know, if these and were I've been really leaning into that Muppets thing recently. I've done a few paintings where it's like color blocked faces. Oh, uh, quick, um, what do you mean color blocked faces? Where it's like there's not a whole, whole lot of detail. Um oh, right. so it's it's very graphic y. Yeah. It's very graphic. Right, right. And um yeah, I mean I think I'm gonna lead into that a little bit more mm-hmm. only because it's it's recognizable. It's right. like, it's fun to do. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I would say that's my inspirations. I mean other than like drag queens in my community and like stuff like that, it, on like a surface aesthetic level, Muppets and <laughs> Muppets and homies figurines are <laughs> your main bread main. and butter. Oh, that's cool though. Um, but it's it, yeah. Uh, so we, I think uh, yeah we got a. I never knew a lot about like some of your struggles, so it's nice to. I guess that's like a, a common topic you talk to, yeah. At like an art show, like yeah, my yeah. my parents didn't want me home or something. Um, yeah, oh, that's nice, yeah. man. Um, is there anything you want to promote as far as shows or? Because this should be out sometime next week, so um, or like s- where people could probably follow you, just so people. Oh well, my Instagram is um, Pastel Bonito, which is just my art name: P A S T E L L E B O N I T O. And um, uh, stay tuned for a solo show later this year. Nice. Um, okay. <laughs> now, nah, you know, that's something th- like performance arts is something, I guess because I like music a lot and that's mm-hmm. a performance art. It's just like you don't see it, especially like unless you're a musician or maybe he's a poet, you don't really see that around here. Yeah. So it's cool to, and that I think that was my first ever drag show. Probably. Um. But no, it, I mean it was, it was fun. That was yeah, that was that was fun. Definitely. Thank you to Chicano Art Gallery too. That was oh yeah, that was that a was nice, a great event. It was well put together. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe besides the lighting, but yeah. you know, that's besides I mean, the fact. Yeah, that's besides the point. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, yeah. now why am I talking shit? I feel bad now. <laughs> no, I no, I read's cool. great. I read was the curator. Oh, definitely. Yeah, everything um, was cool. But yeah, um, but yeah, thanks for coming on, and um, Thank you it was me. nice talking to you, and hopefully. You know, it, you're welcome here anytime. You have something, you know, maybe in a year you find out you're on, I don't know, you have a YouTube channel all of a sudden. and I don't know, yeah. fucking something happens <laughs> to you. Even if you fucking yeah. lose a leg, come back on and yeah. tell us about it. Okay. She'll be here next week. I'm going to lose my leg. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. That'll be <laughs> those, like, I feel like they could last an hour. Um, <laughs> but for sure. Um, so thanks everybody for listening and um, have a great day, night. And we'll see you all next time.